Hello, this is John Squared. Today we'll be starting a new series called On a Side Note. In this series, we'll be talking more about our individual opinions or minor complaints that we thought were not review worthy. This will contain many subjective areas, inclu including preferences for certain sound signatures, design, etc. If you want a more objective review on the three earphones, first check our cordless earphone comparison video, where we evaluate and compare the earphones based on category. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the WF-1000X. I originally had very high hopes for this model because, well, the idea of a noise cancelling and a cordless earphone in a package was very appealing to me. Well, Sony did deliver on that promise. It was a noise cancelling cordless earphone, but it was neither a good cordless earphone nor a good noise cancelling earphone. The connection just plain sucked. And as for noise cancelling, I think you can share a lot more insight on this topic than I can. Well, first of all, this is sort of going to resemble a rant because, you know, I, I also had sort of high hopes because, well, like, it, it's Sony and I've used a lot of their earphones and headphones on noise cancelling and, well, my past experiences, they were, pretty, they were pretty great. So there is literally no noise cancelling in the base areas where it is really needed as passive isolation, even with very good foam tips, they don't cancel out a lot, cancel out a lot of bass. And, you know, like, higher frequency areas, you can sort of get away with good passive isolation. So, base isolation is where it's really needed. But, none. Yeah, like, I mean, base noise cancelling is the essence of noise cancelling. That's why, like, Bose, if you go into their stores, they have, like, a giant speaker that's playing the sound, the rumbling of an airplane. And then you put their headphone on and then it's like, oh my god, the noise is gone. That's when people are like, uh, they can see that, How well it works. You know, but on the Sony, it's like literally none. Well, this could be like a, a, a massive, well, not a massive, but a disclaimer. This could be due to my ear shape and like, well, I, I do have a like fairly universal ear shape, but... Yeah, I wouldn't really say that you have an average year. No, no, I have an average year. But then, like, my experience with the noise cancelling on the WF-1000X was also yeah, lackluster. So, well, so... You know, like, my, like, because this has no noise cancelling optimizer, so you you don't have two mics on one set of, like, on one side of the earphones to determine if the noise cancelling is working well. So it cannot correct for the variance among ear shapes and all of those things, like in higher-end Sony noise-canceling models. So this could be due to my experience, but, well, like, speaking to some people like you and, like, others who have used this earphone, and also looking at some measurement data. Like, I thought like, the noise-canceling was noticeable, but then noticeable really isn't good enough. No, like, I, I'm not really sure if it's, like, would like, you not even you call know, it noticeable? No, no, it is noticeable, but like passive isolation could do better, much, much better. Like especially with the ear4s and like you know earphones with foam tips that stick stick deep into your ear. Those could do much, much better. But then again, I I, I digress. So about noise canceling and that thing about the high and mid frequencies, I think manufacturers should put a low pass filter on sort of the noise canceling functionality, especially like. With the WF-1000X, it introduces, like, sort of extra noise in the high areas when you turn the noise cancelling on. And also, like, as I said, passive isolation is good enough for, like, you know, up to, I don't, I'm not really sure, but, like, 30 to 40 decibel isolation in the high areas. So, I think low-pass filter is necessary. And also, like, I, I have something to say on the connection. Okay. So, like... I think on the, on the connection, like, it really, really depends on, like, what kind of a head you have, and also, like, what area you're in, and all of those little things, because, you know, like, you had a much, much worse experience on the connection than what I had, like... Yeah, yeah, but... yeah, we had really different experiences when it came to the strength of the connection. Also, on the I Icon X, I had stuttering like, on my Icon you had, X like, while you said you didn't notice anything. Well, I, I it was like really, really like 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 I did experience some drops, but like you know, like it's really, really infrequent. 
well, why let your foes do that sometimes? And like, yeah, so like it does vary. It do does vary between people and where you are. Like, so that also should be considered. Yeah, I mean, before testing out both products, I remember being really surprised at the price tag of WF-1000X and the WI-1000X because the WF-1000X seemed like a better product. It was a cordless earphone versus a neckband one, and they both had noise cancelling. So why is the WI-1000X more expensive? Now, after testing both of these out, I really know the answer, and... The thing is, the WF-1000X is a much more complete product. The WF-1000X is, well, let's say, an early product in its, like, design stage. Yeah, the pairing, the latency, and the battery life are all bad. They're Sony does like... claim, and it's also sort of true that, like, it does support, you know, like quick charging, like ten minutes of charge for an extra sixty, okay. like one hour of playback. So, yeah, if you're not planning to true. listen to music for like, like because... three straight hours, yeah, you know, yeah, it you could be, be usable. It couldn't. It's not yeah, that yeah, much yeah. of a deal breaker. But still, like the battery life still sucks compared to like uh, AirPods and. No, but like I, I think like. Yeah, three hours is quite short, especially like when you're like trying to, you know, like I don't know, binge watch movies. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You can't really watch movies with that anyway. So yeah, the latency. So on AirPods, you and I both agreed that it would have been a near perfect product if not for its open back design, which is, in your words, a deal breaker. So please let us know more on why you think. The open back design is a deal breaker. Yeah, so like open open back headphones, they do have like first of all, I'm I'm gonna go start with this like open back headphones. They don't isolate like almost at all, except for like high frequencies. But I'm okay with it because they do bring an advantage, which is like they interact more with your ears, and yeah, they give actually do give a more open sound, like because. You know, they interact with your, you know, like, your ear. Acoustically. But, like, open back earphones, since there is no isolation at all, and, like, there is really, like, not much of a benefit to making an earphone open back. Well, unless for the... I'm not sure if it's a small minority, but some people have claimed and, like, uh, do say that, like, their ears do not fit the kernel earphones. Also, they may be, like more comfortable if you're not really used to wearing like in your monitor style kernel earphones so these two can be the like reasons why you would prefer an open back design without those two things like they're virtually like they have no advantages and so and also another disclaimer i also have another disclaimer yeah, because, like, you know, like, the places that we live in, big cities, like, a lot of noise is just, like, pre prevalent everywhere, so... Yeah, yeah, Seoul is a If loud you city. are living in, like, you know, like, less urban or just, like, areas with just, like, less people and less cars in general, you may be okay with the lack of isolation. But, like, where we live, where the ambient noise level is usually above 70 to 75 decibels, like... If you want to preserve your hearing while listening to elongated sessions of music, isolation is, like, Im imperative. Apart from that, I mean, I thought AirPods was a pretty great product. I mean, if you play with it a little bit, I mean, you can get it to sound pretty good. Okay, like, you know... Yeah, 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 if you don't care about the sub-bass, Yeah, sub -bass, is... like, there is literally no sub-bass, like... At, well, not not literally no sub bass, but like it's really really weak. It sounds like a very poor pair of speakers. Your average pair of studio monitors without any subwoofer would have better bass sub bass, like to be exact. So there is one way. There there is like that's where like if it was an in your monitor or if it was sealed a lot better, then it could be it could re reproduce sub bass sub bass. Much better, so that's also like, you know... The connection was pretty impressive though. 
yeah, connection that it's fantastic and battery life. It's like it's really nice. Yeah, the case. I Those mean, two. The case was the smallest of the three earphones, but then it could charge well, the earphone like, like five times. I, I I think like the case being small is like, I it's not really that much of a deal. No, 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 no. I mean, the case being small it's not, has like, nothing much of a deal to do at all. with it, really. I was just impressed that the case could charge the earphones five times, while the other earphones' cases could not. Uh, it being small is, like, if it's small enough to pocket, I don't think it matters really much. Yeah, I think it, it, it sort of speaks about the efficiency, like... Yeah, yeah, I just hope... Like other earphones cases or other earphones themselves were as efficient because oh. like 10 hours of battery life is enough but uh, you can't hurt from having more battery life. Yeah, having bigger batteries is like usually in many many cases much better. Yeah, it's like good for everyone except for the manufacturer maybe. So having a more isolating design even if not being an in-ear monitor would really improve the sound consistency. It doesn't really reproduce sub bass like that. Well, which is not may not be very important to many people, but like when assessing sound quality, not reproducing a particular frequency is objectively bad. So yeah, like there's no getting around it. It's just a bad thing. Uh, if it's sealed more, then sub bass would be fixed, and also the inconsistency because you know like. You, you can like it. It varies so much depending on how your I don't know inner you know, your outer ear canal is shaped. So how well it sort of like sits on it, and because like with uh, in in your monitors, you can change out the tips or foam tips, and generally like generally they will sound consistent. You you will be able to get a consistent fit and a nice seal. But the AirPods don't do that, so that's also sort of a drawback and would have been fixed if you, you know, like made it an IEM, IEM design. But then again, there may be some engineering challenges that we are not really familiar about. We're not really technicians, so I can't really be too hard on Apple for not making it in here. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, AirPods is a great product as is, but I mean, we can always hope for more. Okay, so that should do it on the AirPods. And so about the Gear Icon X, since we have a standalone review that's coming soon, uh, we will not be going into much detail about the earphone itself, but there are some things that we thought we should mention. So on its sound quality, Samsung advertises it's like, you know, a variable bandwidth codec which says that if the connection is poor, they will compress the audio more, and if it's good, then it won't compress the audio. But regardless, even in like perfect conditions, you have the headphones, the earphones right next to each other. Like, there still was some compression, which is, you know, like in casual listening outside, not really noticeable, but you know, like... Critical listening, maybe? Yeah, uh, in critical listening, or just like, you know, when you really want to enjoy your music and all that stuff. Compression in the highs is noticeable, especially if you compare it side by side to the standalone MP3 function, which has no compression at all. It is sort of noticeable, and you might want to take that into consideration when purchasing a Gear Icon But then again, not too noticeable. Many people will just like, eh, I don't really care. It sounds good enough. We talked about all three of those earphones, so that concludes it for the first segment of On a Side Note. I hope all the viewers enjoyed it, and feel free to like, dislike, leave a comment in the comment section if you want to give us more extensive feedback. This was Sean Squared, and as always, thanks for watching.